So I realised that I really like to do random generation, and so I have started a new game using an old engine of mine that I made a while back. So let me show you what we've got so far. So it's a multiplayer game, so I'll just show you what it looks like with two screens. And, uh, one, two. Oh, it looks really cool in the second one, look at that. So this is our client. Yeah, so that's the game, and it's a bit buggy, and it's whatever, <laughs> um, but it's a randomly generated game. What I'm going for is randomly generated map, random enemies positioned everywhere, random items everywhere. There's an inventory system, which I'll show you real quick. So if we go one player, uh, yeah, <laughs> and here we go, here's the random map. Um, oh, here's a skeleton enemy that I made. So he's pretty cool. Yeah, but basically the random generation thing is something that I really enjoy doing and I thought it would be cool to build a game where um, you can just get plonked in a random map, find your way to the exit, takes you down to the next level and you do the same thing except everything's harder, there's more enemies, they're faster, they're stronger. Maybe the items are rarer, the tiles might be harder, etc. Um, so if you followed random generation, random level generation tutorials before, like you'll be familiar with this, but I've got a whole bunch of levels up in the top right. So that's one tile, that's another tile, that's another tile, end tile, and a starting tile. Um, and to do this for multiplayer, it's a little bit trickier than to do it for single player. Um, so the way that it works is I have my game mode which has a bunch of shit in it but basically whenever a player logs in or a player connects to it whether it's a client, a uh, host, uh, yeah whatever, the server or the client um, you just we tell it to generate the level on the client's version of the game um, and everything all the parameters that are going to be used to generate the level are being drawn from a data table in here which I'll show you in a sec. But basically we've got a seed which will be set on the server, um, I need to change that later, and then we're generating the map on the client. So this is inside the player controller of the client, um, and everything is happening in this function here, so this is where all the magic is. So we've got the start and the finish tiles being spawned in using this magic then the rest of the tiles that aren't start or finish or some other form of special tile they're being spawned using this so this is just selecting a random tile from the list in the data table which I'll show you in a second and then everything up there was just the coordinates now what this is doing is actually spawning in the levels at those coordinates um, so that happens, generates the map we wait until all of the levels are actually spawned in and they're visible and then once they're spawned in and they're visible um, we spawn the player in, turn off the loading screen and on the server I'm spawning some items scattered throughout the map and some enemies scattered throughout the map and the logic for those it's just getting a random XY position somewhere on the map at the moment and then just putting them there. So it's got a list of enemies it can choose from and a list of, uh, list of items that it can choose from. And it gets all the information from the data table. So let me show you what we can do in the data table. We have a number of tiles, so if I set that to one instead of five, this will change the size of the map. So now you can see it's a lot smaller. But all the same number of enemies are still in there because they're worked out differently. The tile size is the width of the tile here, so if you measure it from the end to the end, 1,000, uh, 10,000, sorry. Um, so we can change, you can change this to like 10 if you want, so if we change the number of tiles to 10 and just jump in the game, kaboom. Now you can see that they just go on forever and ever. Do you reckon I can get over there? 
Look at that. God, that's crazy. Um, so that's the number of tiles. Now the random levels, so these are the level names that we want to fill in the majority of the map. So you could have heaps and heaps of these if you wanted. Um, and then we have specific levels, so that's the start and the finish tiles. And I've got settings there, whether or not I want them to be at a random position at begin play, or if I want to specify a position. I like the random position because you can just start wherever and you've got to find the finish, which can be literally anywhere on the map. Um, and then we have a list of item classes, so I can add whatever items in here that I want and uh, a list of enemy classes as well, and these will be spawned throughout the map. Um, is that all I had to show you? I think that might be all I had to show you. So yeah, I'm gonna try and wrap this up and get this into a functional game whenever. I don't know, <laughs> we'll see how it goes, see if I get sick of it or not, but I am working on another game as well, um, a simple puzzle sort of game, so. It's good to have multiple projects going on at once, I feel, because when one dries up and you get sick of one, you can just jump to another and you can keep your keep your fluid movement going. You stay inspired when you're moving from project to project instead of trying to finish just one thing and working on that same one thing all of the time. That, that doesn't work well for me, so I like to work on something until I'm sick of it and then jump to something else and work on that and just stay fluid. But yeah, so the goal for this is to have a big randomly generated game where items are random, enemies are random, levels are random. Um, you can play through and set the settings for yourself. It's multiplayer, so you can kill shit with your friends and try and survive with your friends and go deeper and deeper and see how hard you can, how far you can get and how hard it gets. Um, is there anything else I wanted to say? If you want to learn how to do random generation stuff, I've got tutorials for that on my channel as well. So have a look at those. Random level generator or something, <laughs> I think it's called. We've got Minecraft tutorials as well. So if you want to build Minecraft worlds, which is more advanced randomization, then have a look at those as well. Um, you'll learn a lot doing those tutorials if you're new to random generation. There's a lot of stuff that's covered in those, especially the Minecraft ones, well, and the random level generation ones, so, um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave that there. One more thing I'll show you is just how I've set up my seeds. If you want to learn how to do seeded random level generation, so in the game mode, um, we're setting a random stream to a seed. This will only happen on the server. This is in the wrong spot right now, but this needs to happen on the server. Um, and then I suppose I can pass that seed through to each of the clients when they generate their map. So when they generate the map and whenever we have a situation where we're using random integers to say select a random element from an array, you want to use the seed or the stream to generate that value. But yeah, man, oh, it's been a big day. Oh, I just realized that I did that all with the fucking camera on me. God. Um, so whenever you're in a situation where you're selecting a random element from an array, um, so if you're using an integer to select that random element, you want to have the get integer in range from stream, and you want to have your stream connected in there. Um, and then all the client, the server, and all of that will generate the same map. And the same thing will happen when, oh, sorry, a different thing will happen when I'm spawning in items and things. When I'm spawning in items, um, we're doing this on the server using the seed, the stream, and then all of the items and the enemies are then replicated to the clients. So the clients aren't actually spawning items or enemies. That's all happening on the server. Whereas with the map generation, the map can be regenerated on the client and the server from the same seed. So there's no need for network communication between the client and the server or the server and the client when you're generating a map because even though the whole thing's random, you can reliably reproduce the same randomization using the seed. Okay. Um, that's it, guys. <laughs> Peace out, and I'll see you in a new development log soon. 
there anything else I need to say? I don't think so. <laughs> See ya.